Welcome to the fourth video of Asset Based Balance, a video series. And today we're going to move and start talking about ABG interpretation. Now, let's put some rules here and make sure they stick in our mind. Now, the first one we said that the hydrogen ion relation with partial pressure of CO2 and bicarb has an inverse relationship with the bicarb and a direct relationship with hydrogen ion. This means that the pH will have this relation with bicarb partial pressure of CO2. So it's an inverse relation of partial pressure of carbon dioxide and direct relationship with bicarb. That means bicarb goes up, pH goes up. If it goes down, pH goes down and the opposite here with partial pressure CO2. That's very important to understand when we interpret ABG. So that's the first thing. Now, ABG interpretation follow a set, a set of rules which make it easy. Once you understand it, it's pretty easy to analyze ABG. Why? Because ABG or acid-based disturbances is a sign or a symptoms of an un underlying problem. So to fix acid-based balance, you need to reach an accurate diagnosis reach the underlying problem and treat it remember that you could treat the sign and symptoms temporarily temporizing measures of treating this acid-based disturbances but unless you treat the underlying problem you're not going to make the patient better third point acid-based disturbances are rarely pure which means most of the time most often they are mixed which means that it's not it's not going to be often that you see in a respiratory acidosis pure respiratory acidosis or pure respiratory alkalosis or pure metabolic acidosis so it's usually a mixed acid-based disorder or a combination of things the next thing and we're going to talk about more that usually with the mixed acid-based disturbances usually the respiratory element okay which means when there is a problem with a partial pco2 as a primary problem, it's usually you should have one disorder, like either alkalosis or acidosis at the same time. So you will not have a patient who's having a respiratory acidosis along with concomitant respiratory alkalosis. So you would have only one disorder. And this can be divided into acute versus chronic versus acute on top of chronic, right? Well, in metabolic, you may have multiple concomitant disorders. You could have at the same time acidosis plus alkalosis and we'll explain that soon because it seems counterintuitive no you could have the same and even acidosis as you know acidosis we divide it in normal anion gap or the hyperchloramic as we explained and increased anion gap so you could have both of these type of acidosis at the same time these metabolic abnormalities could be combined with one of those respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis and we'll come to that the abg interpretation follows set rules in terms of that the body is so good in trying to compensate when their ph goes down or goes low the body find out where is the problem that causing this ph to go up or down whether in the bicarb then tell the lungs to try to help by adjusting the co2 according to the ph right and vice versa vice versa if there is a problem with the co2 the body tells the kidney to try to play with the bicarb to adjust for the change in ph as we said the co2 usually regulated by the lungs and it's, this is usually fast within seconds and minutes while well, this is by the kidney and this can take hours to days one important rules to remember also that the body never able or are, the body is not able to fully compensate for let's say the patient is acidotic don't expect washing co2 will be able to fully compensate for that so the body only can do some partial compensation at the end until to help the body keep going until we treat the underlying problem now when we get an abg the abg the arterial blood gas provide you with the following values right ph partial pressure of co2 partial pressure of o2 and the bicarb level this is these are direct measurements while the bicarb and the abg usually derived from what we call henderson hasselbeck equation and that bring me to that when we order bmp or a cmp there will be a value called co2 carbon dioxide which is basically the concentration of dissolved co2 in the extracellular fluid and this is usually from a venous blood remember that while the abg is arterial so because co2 when it's dissolved basically you know co2 as you know remember this cause the carbonic acid and this through the carbonic anhydrase gets to 
H plus and bicarb. So basically what we're saying here that the CO2, you can assume it's equivalent because of the almost, almost always dissolved CO2 is in form of bicarb. So when you see that CO2 in the CMP or BMP, it is, it is the extracellular fluid concentration of the bicarb. Remember that. While well, the bicarb in the ABG is derived from the Henderson Hasselbalch equation and we'll come to that. Uh, where is the, when do we use this and when do we use this? What really matters when we interpret interpret the ABG we just need the pH partial pressure of CO2 and bicarb okay once you have these values from an arterial blood gas remember always like you have this from arterial blood gas and to have the bicarb level this one the CO2 or bicarb level from a CMP and BMP at the same time to have things very clear and straightforward to interpret the, a uh, the ABG so first which side is pH going acidotic or acidemic or alkaloric or alkalomic? Remember pH, normal pH, 7.35 to 7.45. So if, uh, if less than this, then going acidotic. If it's above 7.45, that means alkaloidic. One important thing, normal ABG, oh, sorry, normal pH does not rule out acid-based disturbances. Remember that and we'll show this very soon in example. So first of all, you decide this and based on this, decide what explain the change in pH and that could, should be your primary disturbance. Whether the change in pH going up or down, what explains that? I'll just quick example because I know you know this very well. So the pH is 7.5, I look at the PCO2 and the bicarb. What changes in PCO2 or bicarb can explain this pH? So if the CO2 is low, if it's explained by low CO2 based on the, we just mentioned that CO2 and, bi and pH are an inverse relationship, then I can say this is a primary respiratory issue. If it's from high bicarb, then you can say this is a metabolic issue. So uh, that's pretty easy and straightforward to decide what's the primary issue. Remember that even if you don't guess this really well, don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of the problems. But this should be very straightforward and that should be the first step here is deciding is the patient acidotic or acidemic or alkaloidic, alkalemic and find the explanation from the bicarb and PCO2 what causing pH to go up or down is it the, primarily the bicarb that mean metabolic primarily the carbon dioxide that mean respiratory so that's the first thing remember that the second thing here immediately calculate the annual gap always calculate annual gap this should be becomes number one instead of two if the pH was normal let's say the pH was 7.4 immediately calculate the annual gap normal pH does not rule out acid-based disturbance remember that now calculate the anion gap that will tell you if there is increased anion gap or normal anion gap right so that's the next step why this is important it's almost always increase anion gap especially if it's above 20 that always almost always indicate there is increase anion gap metabolic acidosis regardless of the pH regardless whatever going there that you almost always have increased anion gap metabolic acidosis and you need to look into that the third step immediately if there is excess anion gap if there is increased anion gap calculate the what we call excess anion gap which basically the measured anion gap uh, minus the calculated uh, minus normal anion gap. This we call excess anion gap. Then, then the excess anion gap, you add it, excess anion gap. If there is excess anion gap, you add this to the bicarb concentration, the one from BMP or CMP not the one from the ABG and this value let's call it A for example which is excess anion gap the sum of excess anion gap and measured bicarb from BMP and compare this to normal serum bicarb okay which is let's say from 22 to 26 milli equivalent per liter so if A is bigger than normal bicarb serum bicarb that means something and if a less than normal serum bicarb that means something i'm going to give you a pause for a second think what does this mean just pause for a second and think about it okay if the excess anion gap and 
the measured buy curve from BMP value more than the normal buy curve, then there is an underlying metabolic alkalosis. And remember, we got to this point after we diagnosed that there is an increase anion gap metabolic acidosis. Excess anion gaps, that means there is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. So along with the increased anion gap metabolic acidosis, we found that there is metabolic alkalosis. And if it's less than, then there is a concomitant normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So where is all of this coming from? You may start getting confused. We assuming, and again, this is an assumption close to reality. When we talked about the anion gap, remember we said sodium minus the sum of bicarb plus chloride. We said this is anion gap. So we said each hydrogen ion will eat from the bicarb, will decrease the bicarb by one, technically will increase the anion gap by one if the chloride remain constant. So if you assume in reality, this is, this is not completely true, but close to reality, you understand then this equation, the one-to-one -one ratio between the decrease in bicarb and increase in anion gap that should make things easy to understand so this equation now will make all the sense now i have to say that this is not completely true in some cases like in dka it's completely true in lactic acid it's, it's kind of 1 to 1.5 but for the sake of this way of interpretation of abg it's gonna work for you so don't worry about it if it's not completely one to one based on this this makes all the sense that when we have this excess anion gap this is the bicarb that was consumed technically right so you add it to the major bicarb so if that's no more than normal serum bicarb you know that there was more bicarb than it's kind of expected so this is metabolic alkalosis and here the, that means there is an extra element of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis please that uh, i want you to understand that really well because i'm gonna stop this video here so let you digest everything we talked about and next video i promise you will give you some examples that will make things very clear for you Thank you.